Tel Aviv with all those nightclubs on Friday night and the strip clubs. God knows what goes on in there. Hookers. Hookers. Blood, gay pride parade. Pornography. Driving on Shabbos. I mean, it's like, you know, Chazer, they sell pig in that, in that country. You know, and all these terrible things. Right? It, 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 it's, it's, it's a disgrace. It's, it's, uh, it defiles. But it's, the land is still Kadosh. We don't have the power to make it non-kosher. That land, or to make it non uh, take it out of its status of Kedusha. Because, like, the land is, is Kodesh because it's separated from all the other lands. That's eternal. There's nothing that the Jews can do to, 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 to make it non-kosher, to make it non-Kedusha. We can trafe it up and make it a, 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 a Chilol Shem because we've taken something holy and we're making it prof a, a profane, but if we can't make it profane enough that we can absolutely remove the Kedusha from it. I mean, the Holy Land is always the Holy Land, you know, even if it's got the Trafe country on top of it. No act is always wrong. Context determines the moral absolute. Morality is absolute, but the morality is determined by the context. Do you, do you really believe that? Yes, absolutely. You know that, that contradicts other things you've said. No, it doesn't. Well, well, the Torah is eternal, and the Torah has tells us that there's certain things that are absolutely no good. It's so always, those things are always, always determined no by good. the context. Give me an act that is always right or wrong. Male homosexual act is an abomination. That's the context. It's what he's sticking in. Like if he if he had sex with if he had a sexual act with his wife and made a baby, it'd be a beautiful act. Oh, so why don't you rephrase what you're saying? I said the context, like. Sex because you said that wrong. sin is not, uh, there's no such said thing no as... no act is always wrong. And I'm going to say... So the act of inserting your penis into somebody is not always wrong. The, this act of inserting your penis in uh, penetration is not always wrong, but certain things that you do context, with it... Yeah, yeah, okay, the context, right, okay, it okay. the moral but, Well, you don't even need to bring in a guy. Let me just say, a sex with a woman is not always wrong. Right. It can be wrong. Mm -hmm. Eating is not inherently wrong, but even right. certain things is. Right. right, okay, I agree with that 100%. This is a blowout game. Wasn't it supposed to be a blowout? Spittle is considered in Torah to carry infection and disease, Leviticus 15a. Spitting is not an honored practice among Jews. Okay. What goes on with the sexual organs is of great concern to the religion of Israel. I want to go to, uh... There's nothing in there. No, I want to look, man. It's my, my, my gig. Trigger that everybody's it laughing. Slows up the show. Okay. Uh, Emily says hi as well. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to my f friend Emily. Okay. Uh, okay, great. Okay, go ahead. It's my nephew's girlfriend's birthday, so hi. Say happy birthday to Emily. I don't care about Emily. Oh, you're an ass. Okay, next. What goes on with your sexual organs is of great concern to the religion of Israel. I enjoy engaging in jocular humor with the ladies, saying things like, I can't touch you, you might be unclean, but that isn't really what the word Tameh means. So if I say things like that to you, like, oh, you're unclean, I don't know if I can sit there. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Have you ever had an unusual discharge from your penis? What do you, what do you mean, my, my, black, my black woman doctor now? <laughs> It's in the Torah portion, perhaps a clear liquid or a pus, or was it a dense substance that caused a blockage? No, I'm going to go with a no on that. Was it gonorrhea or the sif or garden variety HIV? No, no, none of the above. I've never had those. Okay, no judgment. What about you? No. In the 1982 movie, My Favorite Year, the Peter O'Toole character is found in the women's room. And so some matron tells him, this is for ladies only. So he shakes his little fella, turns around and says, so is this, ma'am. I just have to run a little water through it once in a while. And that applies here because? Well, there's a lot of talk about genitals. Oh, okay. And that's a dick joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. So Leviticus chapter 15 verse 18 says, And if a man has carnal relations with a woman, they shall bathe in water and remain impure till evening. Now this does not sound to me like such a harsh penalty, frankly. I wouldn't mind paying it for the right girl. There's nothing here about his soul being in peril or his sin making Jesus cry. <laughs> the woman does not become impure from semen entering her body. In fact, 
Regular helpings of said substance help many women feel happy. The BBC reports women exposed to their partner's semen during sex may find themselves feeling happier than those who use a condom, say scientists. Scientists in the United States believe the mood-altering hormones in semen absorbed through the vagina help to boost women's mood. Semen contains a range of hormones, including testosterone and estrogen, both of which have been shown to improve mood. Mr. Gallup said the findings may also apply to women who engage in unprotected oral sex and people who engage in anal sex, but he said further research was needed in these areas. And of course you want to volunteer for some of that research. That's for sure. Okay. It is forbidden according to wait, the... Wait, 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 wait. Before we move on to the next thing, I want to discuss that a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, by the way, his wishful thinking there, like, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be the same thing. If, like, if they're willing to get ahead and do anal, yeah, it'll help them. You know, don't, don't have anything scientific on that, but I'm just... We just need further <laughs> research. <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of theory there on that one. Um, I wanted to say that the Talmud actually, this is not a surprise to Jews because it's actually in the Talmud. Mm -hmm. It's in our oral tradition that uh, it says that when a man um, and woman have, when a man and a wife have relations, that he gives to her, he loses strength and she gains strength. Oh, that's interesting. That, that the, uh, there's a life force mm -hmm. in his ejaculation mm -hmm. that strips him of his, of his energy mm -hmm. and she ends up stronger from it, he mm -hmm. ends up weaker. Mm -hmm. So you might want to look and see, you know, that that mm -hmm. seems to correlate a little bit. It is forbidden, according to Torah, to have sex within sacred precincts. Is a conservative shul a sacred precinct? Wait, wait, wait. What is it? What? What? You can't have sex in the temple. Precincts. What, what is that? What pasuk is that? Because I don't know what that translates as. What did you translate? Precincts. Like you can't have sex in the temple. Like in the ancient, well, most of the ancient Near East, they'd have like uh, temple prostitutes. And you go to temple and you'd bang a prostitute. And that was considered. Who hasn't done that? God. Who hasn't done that? We don't roll that way. No, okay. So, is a conservative shul though a sacred precinct? Because I was with a woman in a conservative shul, and it, we got bored okay. during conservative services, so we started making out in the hallway, and we were about to go into the rabbi's office to really rev things up, but the Mexican help stopped us. Great, but thank, by the way, thank you for not, for, for not letting us go 20 minutes without telling us about your sex life. Another time, after Shabbos, we started making out on the Bema, right next to the Aron Kodesh, right. which contains Torah scrolls, right. but we didn't go any further. Another time, after a dinner with a shiksa at a kosher restaurant, I walked up to my modern orthodox shul, and right in front of the security cameras in the doorway that evening, we started making out. You made out with a shiksa in the security cameras of a modern orthodox shul. Yeah, is that wrong? Yeah, don't get a caught on camera, man. That's just really lame. I'm um, starting to think that sometimes I lack good judgment. Uh, wh which shul was that, by the way? I can't, I can't, I can't, I don't want to say the name. Okay, okay. Um, uh, the answer is that uh, the conservative one for sure is not, uh, what was that word you call it? Sacred precinct? It's not a sacred precinct. It's, it's a makam um, tame. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's, it's a makam, it's a, it's a place of heresy. Okay. So it's not, it's a makam. So I don't have to worry about making it. No, it's probably the best thing that ever, it's the most holy thing that ever happened in there. Right, right, okay. <laughs> um, the other one I won't comment on, because you didn't tell me the truth. <laughs> Go ahead. What would the rabbis say from a Torah perspective to people today suffering from a gross skin disease? Sometimes I wish we could put them outside the camp. I don't think they would say anything. Okay. What would you say? I'd say, like, try to do something about that, pal. <laughs> okay. The Torah does not require menstruating women to be put outside the camp. Good. Every woman would be outside the camp. Every, I mean, it would be crazy if that happened. Well, some of them have had hysterectomies. I dated a girl, her last name was Baron, and she had a hysterectomy. Why are you telling me that? It's hilarious. Oh, Baron! The, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that is pretty funny. So, I remember once this shiksa attacked me, we were lying on the couch watching Monty Python on the Holy Grail. Here we go. She was lying on top of me, but I knew she had a boyfriend. So my conscience says to me, you're in great peril. And I say to myself, I don't think I am. Then my conscience says back to me, yes you are, you're in terrible peril. And I say, let's face the peril together. Then my conscience says, no, it's too perilous. 
And I say, look, it's my duty as a knight to sample as much peril as I can. Then my 